everybody. Um, first of all, how about those dancers? Wow. I sort of sorry I have to follow that. Um, but anyway, they were awesome. So how many of you have heard of The Real Real? Oh, that's good. More than I would have thought. That's great. Because in the U.S., we have an awareness of about 10%. So it's pretty low. But let me just talk about it. I founded The Real Real. It'll be almost seven years ago when we shipped our first product. And all we do is sell used things. But we sell beautiful used things that are made well. If you fast forward this year, we're going to be about $700 million in top line revenue. And next year, we'll, we should be over a billion dollars. We sell women's fashion, men's fashion, fine jewelry, watches, home and art. And we're growing because we changed what consignment looked like. We are the circular economy. We took away friction from the consigner. We'll come to your house. We'll pick up things. We'll send you free shipping labels. We do all the work. We, took, we injected trust for the consumer. We guarantee the products are real. We guarantee the condition. We take returns if the customer isn't satisfied. We literally change the equation. And so what that means is our consigner base has grown substantially. 70% of the people who have consigned with us have never consigned before. On our buyer base, 50% of our buyers have never bought consignment. Now, why is this important? Look, in the grand scheme of things, my goal is to get us to $5 billion in five years. We're on track to do that. It doesn't really create miracles. But why is this important? In the grand scheme of things, if you look at personal luxury products in the market, $230 billion worth of personal luxury products go into the market worldwide every year. So we're really small. But we're starting to change the way people think. And that's why it's important. Our consigners love it because they make money, but they also love the fact that they have these beautiful things they know have use and they can pass on. They're starting to be understand that they are making an impact on the planet. We're certainly helping them with that, but they're starting to understand that. And now, when they buy in the primary market, and they didn't stop buying, by the way, they buy things they know they can resell because they understand that role of passing things on. They have switched their buying patterns to products that have the best resale value. And on the consumer basis, customers are making a choice to buy resale instead of not the luxury goods, instead of fast fashion because our prices start approximating fast fashion and because these items are made well, they can be resold again. So we get people buying from us, reselling back to us, buying from us and reselling. This is fundamentally changing the way people think about the brands, which brings up the brands. Look, at the end of the day, we're not going away. Some brands would wish at the beginning we were going away, and they didn't understand our goal was to support the primary market and that we are part of the circular economy and we are part of their sustainability or should be part of the way they look at sustainability. So I can say that some brands are more open than others, and I'm happy to say that Stella McCartney, I don't think this will be a surprise that people know her, was the most progressive and the, her brand embraced our brand to get the message out that when things are made well, they should be resold and it's incredibly good for the planet. So we have a collaborative, cooperative relationship. It's the first of its kind where we work with Stella's buyers. We inform them when they're ready, they can resell. We give them a gift card to go back and shop Stella and we're informing our buyers that Stella McCartney is supporting sustainability and the impact of, sustain, of the goods, of recycling the goods. Now, there's one big missing equation in what we're doing, and that is the true measurability of everything we do. So we can say it's common sense you want to recirculate, 
but we don't have a good way to measure it. So we've been working with different scientists, different groups to start quantifying really the impact on the planet of recirculating goods, previously owned goods. We should start, we should have our sustainability calculator out at the end of the year and it will keep getting modified. So not only will we be telling people, in the case of a consigner, you made this much, you've also impacted the world this much. And when people buy from us, we'll say, by buying previously owned goods, you've actually saved this. And there are some key facts that blow people's heads, and you're probably very well informed and you know this, but when you think of just making one cotton t-shirt, it takes three years of drinking water to make one cotton t-shirt. Or dye one pair of jeans, it takes 1,800 gallons of water to dye one pair of jeans. And then you think of the waste going into the water, and we're just talking about one aspect. We're not even talking about landfills. This is a very powerful statement. It's powerful for the millennials, it's powerful for Generation Z, and it's powerful for my age group. So look, if the real world didn't sell beautiful things and we didn't focus on luxury, we wouldn't have a business because fast fashion doesn't have a resale market. But because of our focus, and because of our ability to remove friction for the consigner and inject trust for the consumer, I can confidently say we are just getting started. In fact, we may be the first billion dollar circular economy company out there. And I'd welcome anyone to beat me because it's all good if you do. So that's really it. I'm finishing a little early, but I appreciate your time. And um, we do ship to the UK. We ship worldwide. We, and we will have a store here in 2020. So thank you very much.